Hi, my name is Jasper Box. I'm a student social innovation at Performatory, Breda University of Applied Sciences. And today I'm going to present to you the research that I've been doing in the past 15 weeks. During this research, I have further developed my professional perspective and approach within the practice of transformative social innovation. So at the beginning of this research, I was exploring what is it that we actually do as transformative social innovators? I believe a lot of our practice has to do with contributing to systems change, improving the way our society is organized, and by that, contributing to the quality of life for all. I researched what system change is about, and I came across what I believe to be a very specific definition of what system change entails. Shifting the conditions that hold the problem in its place. I really like this definition because it's clear, it's simple, and it's actionable. According to Peter Sange, there are six conditions of systems change. Six conditions that you can shift to ultimately change systems. The areas that I focused on in particular in this research are the relational and connections between people and the mental models that inform their worldview and with that, the way they interact with the world around them. These two conditions form the fundament in the systems thinking pyramid. And I would like to emphasize on the relevance and importance of the relational and changing systems. According to systems thinker Nora Bateson, to truly change systems, the focus should be on changing relationships. The reason is because structures are formed through our relationships, the way we relate to one another. If we change the structures, but the way we relate to another remains the same, the changes in structures won't sustain. So to truly change systems, we should shift the relational conditions that hold the problem in its place, to rearrange how people relate to one another, to improve the quality of our interactions. I would like to indicate the importance of the quality of our interactions in changing systems with the following metaphor. Our interactions, like the root network of a tree, they're invisible to us. However, the quality of the life underground and the quality of resources that are shared between trees, so in the interaction with the trees underground, are the conditions of how the trees grow above the ground and what their forest looks like. The mindset, the mental models that we carry and the quality of our interactions determine what physical reality is created. If we want to change our structures and systems, we should cultivate the soil of the forest, or what MIT professor Otto Charmer calls the social field. Improve the quality of interactions and the way we relate to one another. I refer to relationships as narratives. The stories of how we relate to each other, ourselves, and to the planet. During my research, I've developed two larger perspectives to look at these relational conditions and the quality of the social field. One is a narrative of separation, and the other is a narrative of interbeing. Through each of these glasses, we can look at certain contexts within society to see how people relate to one another and what the results are of interacting with another in that way. Many problems that we face within society today are symptoms of living in this narrative of separation, a sense of separation between each other, ourselves, and the planet. In this narrative of separation, we collectively create results that no one wants, from environmental issues to social divides. However, to deal with these systemic problems, we can make a transformation from living this narrative of separation into living a narrative of interbeing, to shift our relational conditions and way of interacting that are at the roots of the problems we face today. So before I go to how we might make this transformation from separation to interbeing, I think it is important to give you an idea about what I mean with each of these narratives and give you some concrete examples of context in which I see each of these narratives exist. Our living in a narrative of separation is very much informed by our economic world narrative. This story tells us that we are individuals who compete with others and seek advantage over others. And this sense of competition creates differences between people and it polarizes society. Furthermore, our current relationship with nature is that we see it as a resource that we can exploit, which causes environmental problems 
such as climate change, and we do not see ourselves as interbeing with nature. To link the narrative of separation to a smaller and more graspable context, let's link this view of separation to an organizational context. In my research, I worked on a practical case within a company. People from the company shared that there was a lack of internal coherence, a lack of a shared story. People did not know what others in the company were doing, processes were not shared, and this disconnection made it difficult for them to carry out the vision of the company. Because of the lacking shared story, it was difficult for them to deal with the challenges that they faced and people felt insecure on taking initiative to deal with these challenges because they felt alone. And I found out that the reason why processes were not shared and why they did not approach each other to look at these challenges together was mainly because their relational patterns were stuck. People had a fixed opinion and expectation about others, which is why the relational dynamics got stuck, making them unable to progress their challenges and their relational pattern was stuck in a closed truth, so to say. Furthermore, a fear of failure and a fear that their ideas would be judged by others made sure that people worked more isolated in their own activities. Because this feels safe. However, these stuck patterns resulted in a disconnection between people in the organization. And thus, I recognize this narrative of separation there. Not only in how these people work together and related to one another, but also in their inability to translate and interbe with the vision of the organization itself and to be able to carry it out to society. Now, the question is, how can we shift the relational conditions between these people to unstuck their relational patterns so that they're able to empower and help each other in dealing with challenges and living a stronger shared story in their mission towards society? How can we make a shift and have a group evolve through conditions of separation to conditions of interbeing. For many years, I've been passionate about acting and storytelling. And within this research, I wanted to translate my experience and interest in acting and storytelling into the practice of transformative social innovation. One of the main acting techniques that I'm a fan of is Meisner technique. The principle of Meisner is what I do depends on what you do. When attending to this acting technique, two actors deeply listen to one another. They put aside their own agenda and suspend their existing belief about the other. And they're open to what emerges from their moment to moment interaction. By bringing this principle into a dialogic setting or organizational culture, we can introduce alternative principles of interaction and open up space for different conversations to take place than people usually have when they're stuck in their old patterns. So that in conversations, they might be open to listen to another person and to put their own agenda or initial opinion about the other aside. According to Professor Saleh Abava, conversations are organizing. Patterns come into being because of the conversations people have. If we shift the kind of conversations people have, we can make a shift in relational conditions and thus our systemic patterns. Professor Saleh Abava is an expert on using improvisation and play in processes of transformation. To learn more about how I could use improvisation and play in shifting these relational conditions and how I could make a shift of relational narratives of separation to narratives of interbeing, I interviewed her. Attending to principles of improvisation and play mostly has to do with creating space for alternative conversations to take place. In the example of the company that I gave, people had a fixed opinion and expectation about others, which kept them stuck in their relational patterns, making them unable to evolve as a culture and carry out their mission in the way they wanted to. Because of their fixed opinion about another, certain conversations were not taking place and certain challenges were not dealt with. However, we can alter the narrative of how these people relate to one another by setting up alternative conversations in which we attend to these underlying principles of improvisation and play. This can be done by setting up a conversation in a creative session, for example, as well as within an organizational dynamic as a whole. 
in line with the Meissner technique principle, what I do depends on what you do. Improvisation means allowing the other to happen to you. This means to be willing to listen to another person, suspending your judgment and to be willing to look at the other person in a new way. Improvisation means thinking yes and instead of thinking no. This invites people to build on each other and their ideas instead of criticizing and breaking down other people's ideas. It means seeing every possibility as a gift to offer, to be open to receive offers and invitations. According to Salia Bava, the characteristics of play and improvisation are to be curious, to be listening, to be engaged. To be in play is a way of being in a dynamic relationship with another and the relationship with the environment and context. You are open to emergence, open to what might come into the conversation in a way that you've not thought about before. Attending to principles of play and setting up alternative conversations contributes to a culture of interbeing in which people listen to each other, see where another person is coming from. This does not mean that people have to agree, but a culture is created in which people share and value a diversity of perspectives and are open to be vulnerable, to question what is, and to conversations on how we can organize ourselves and relate to one another in a different way. Historian Harari says that change is the only constant, and because no one knows what the future will look like, the best thing to focus on is the ability to learn and to change. To focus on the ability to reinvent yourself again and again and again throughout your life. For this to happen, it is important that narratives of interbeing are created, so that people are able to dance with the change and uncertainty. Being curious and questioning together is where the value of conversation comes in to question existing truths and realities of relating to one another and how those relational conditions could be different. I believe that this notion of shared inquiry and having these conversations is going to be extremely important in facing the major challenges of our future. Otter Charmer says that time and time again, we are thrown into blank canvas situations that require us to look at ourselves and collective patterns of behavior to reinvent ourselves, to know who we are, where we want to go as an institution, as individuals, and as a community. To me, this is a quality and condition for interbeing. This is why I believe we need to create space and relational conditions for this learning process and conversations to happen, to learn these abilities collectively to make organizations and communities more resilient to change and being able to dance with uncertainty and lift the questions together. I see my role within transformative social innovation to shift relational conditions that hold a systemic problem in its place by creating and facilitating space and dialogue for new narratives to emerge between people, to reinvent how we relate to ourselves, to each other and the world as a whole, to cultivate the soil of the social field, on micro level to ultimately affect system change on macro level and to use underlying principles and tools of play and improvisation to make that shift happen. Thank you for listening.